The Paramount saga continues, but last week there was actually a really interesting development that Sony was part of a group that offered to pay $26 billion in total for Paramount. Now, of all of these deals that I've seen in the media landscape, this is the one that makes the absolute most sense. And it's because Sony has been one of the few companies that has not invested in streaming. So they could potentially take an entirely new strategy to the Paramount assets. And instead of burning through money on streaming, they could turn all of those assets into revenue generating assets, selling them to the highest bidder. I wanna go through what this strategy would look like and how Sony has looked at streaming and the content business over the last few years, while other companies take a very different approach. My name is Travis Holyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. But let's look at the reporting first. The report from last week is that Sony Pictures and Apollo are looking together to work together to buy Paramount Global for $26 billion in cash. The cash part of this offer is important because the other offer that is coming from Skydance is not all cash, and it's really convoluted as to what they're exactly going to do, what the structure of the business is going to be, and some of it is just buying out Cherry Redstone. So this would just be a much simpler transaction. The question if you're going to combine with a company like Skydance is what in the world are you getting? So you're combining Paramount, which is a struggling company with assets like CBS, Comedy Central, they have a bunch of content like Paw Patrol, but what sort of assets are you adding to that with Skydance? And how are you gonna change the fundamental direction of the business? I just don't know the answer to that. Sony Pictures, on the other hand, has a lot of different assets that are being sold to all kinds of different networks, to different streaming services. They make movies, they make television shows, all kinds of different assets that are then ultimately sold basically just to the highest bidder. And this is where I think the strategy piece of this becomes really interesting. The streaming TV business is likely to play out very different than the linear TV business. I remember linear TV, we have broadcast networks, and then we have cable networks. Broadcast networks for years were the over the air option for people generated most of their money on advertising. And then cable came in and you had things like affiliate fees, you had advertising on top of that. And so that was really a cash flow business for them, but the number of subscribers in the US has gone from about 100 million at its peak to about 60 million, and there's really no sign that, that's, that that decline is stopping. That means that the cash that's coming from those existing properties are not what it used to be. And that cash was really the flywheel that it took to create all of the content or buy content, if you're looking at something like the NFL, for all of these studios all around the world. So what did they do? Well, Fox and Sony took the position of, we will just continue to make content and we're gonna sell it to the highest bidder. We're gonna put our movies in movie studio, in movie theaters, and then we're gonna have it on a streaming service. We're gonna sell it to airlines. We're gonna do all the traditional stuff. Companies like NBC, Paramount, Disney decided to go down the track of streaming. And that has been extremely unprofitable for them. It takes a lot of money to build up a streaming service. You have to attract customers, you have to, start charging those monthly fees, you have to deal with churn, there's all kinds of complications that go into streaming, they are all losing a lot of money. But if you look strategically at how this is gonna play out long-term, I think it's very clear that the streaming business is gonna be what we call the smiling curve, where there's a couple of winners in the top right corner who has more scale and more ability to pay for content than anyone else. That's what's gonna make them the most attractive services in streaming. Netflix is obviously at the top right position right now. And I think it's very clear that Disney is doing absolutely everything they can, pouring billions of dollars into being the second player in that market. Where they're a little bit differentiated is they have more branded content. So Star Wars, Pixar, Marvel, that's not stuff that, that Netflix necessarily has unless they're acquiring it from somebody else. They also have sports with ESPN, that's gonna be part of the bundle in 2025. And then you have Hulu as their general entertainment. So there's at least a strategy there for Disney to get to maybe competing with Netflix. Maybe they don't have 250 million or 300 million subscribers 10 years from now, but maybe they do have 150 or 200 million and they're charging 40 or $50 a month and it's a very profitable business, replacing some of the cable revenue and profits. It's much, much harder to see a service like Peacock or like Max or like Paramount Plus in the case of Paramount 
moving into that top right position and beating out Netflix or Disney. And this becomes really important because what we see with the smiling curve is those companies in the top right not only have more subscribers, but they generally have more revenue per subscriber. So if you have twice as many subscribers and you're charging twice as much per month per subscriber, you now have four times as much money as your lower tier competitor to acquire content, to build better technology, to improve your service year after year. And this is why the smiling curve happens. It's a flywheel on both sides. It's a flywheel for the positive for the companies that are building scale, and it's a flywheel for the negative for the companies that are losing money. We see this in social media. Facebook makes all the money. The companies that don't, like Snap, like Reddit, they're just stuck in this loop of losing money and there's no way to get out of it. And that's just the reality of the business. That's why this smiling curve concept is something I constantly cover on this channel because it really explains a lot of these industries. And I think this is clear in this specific industry. Okay, so what would change if Sony bought Paramount Plus? I think what would end up happening is they would obviously keep CBS. You would now have access to a broadcast network. If you're a company like Sony, that would be great. You have a few cable networks. Maybe you just continue to cash flow those. But the content that is right now going to Paramount Plus, trying to prop up a money losing service, you could just shut down Paramount Plus, take that money losing service, and then sell those assets to the highest bidder, whether that's Netflix or Disney or Peacock or Max, whoever wants to pay for. You can simply sell all of these ha assets like Paw Patrol, like South Park, like all of the TV shows and movies. And that would be, I think, the right financial move. You turn a money losing business into a money making business. And that's how a company like Sony justifies a $26 billion purchase. I also don't think we would get a private equity company involved in it in this if there wasn't some sort of financial payoff immediately in the future. And that's exactly what I think we would see with Paramount Plus being shut down and moving that content to other streaming services that are more financially successful. That could actually be a win-win for everybody right now. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The uncertain part of all of this is that Sherry Redstone still runs the company. And it's not really clear what she wants. She doesn't want the company to be split up by a private equity firm. That's what the initial reporting is saying. But she also obviously wants to maximize the value. And the current business of Paramount just is not sustainable. It's There's just no way to run the business the way that they're running it right now and have it be some sort of a sustainable business in the future. So I think this is one of the big media companies that's getting to a breaking point. They have to figure out exactly what they're going to do. They've done mergers and tried to make streaming work. It's obviously not working. I think that's very clear. So they're going to need to find something else to do with the business and this cash offer from Sony and Apollo, I think is really appealing for everyone involved, for the other streaming companies who could maybe have more assets to buy for Paramount shareholders and for Sony shareholders. This is actually a stock that I own and I own it in part because they've taken a very different approach to the media business by just simply selling this content that they're making to other streamers and that, I think, could be a profit driver for them as opposed to a money loser for all these companies that are going after streaming on their own. But it's going to be fascinating to see how this one plays out. I just think a Paramount and Sony deal makes a lot more sense than Paramount and a company like Skydance. And I don't think there's necessarily anybody else who would be allowed to buy them right now. But what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.